overflow the gas a little bit. Check. Well, good morning, everybody. It's 8.15 in the morning, and uh, I'm going to do the endurance testing, which I'm going to be powering a couple of my, uh, basically the fluorescent lights in my shop. And I'm going to see how long this thing will uh, last, how much, how long it will last on a full tank of fuel with like, you know, quote unquote minimal load. So let's give her a shot here. So. Uh, give her a shot. Oh. She's cold. That's another thing I learned about these guys that they do not. Uh, excuse me. They don't like running when it's cold. I mean, cold for California, I'd just say. It's in the 40s. So. Here. Notice how the lights are not flickering. That's because the sine, sine wave is pretty clean and the harmonic distortion is down. So let's see how this rolls. Be back in a few. Alright, so about an hour and 45 minutes into it and needed to charge the kids' power wheels batteries, so I might as well. Plug it to the DC side and it's supposed to be put, charging at 8 amps, but it's slowly coming up. Um, I heard no change in engine speed when I plugged it in. Let's see how much. Yeah, not much. Uh, Oh heck, not much uh, AC ripple in there. It's mostly they just chopped off the half, the, chopped the sine wave in half because you don't have a full. It's not uh, there's not two phases to the frequency. It's just a single pump. Anyway, let it run. And the princess wants to say something. Okay, checking on it. Yeah, 13.6 volts. It's uh, three hours and 20 minutes into it. And it's still hard over at full. Actually still see the fuel level. And yeah, I'm probably about 50 feet away from the generator while it's running like this. And if I'm not listening for it, I can't hear it. So, get back to you in a while. Later. So it's five hours, 18 minutes. Battery's at 14.2. gauge is pretty much still kind of on the hard over side. Focus. There's it. Fuels just into the bottom of the filter. So, let's see. Let's see if she makes it to 10 hours. That's the one thing I want to see her do. See you later. Okay. Seven and a half hours in. We've just come off the full mark. Uh, for my previous testing, that's probably it's probably at about a third of a tank now, and 15.5 volts. So there's probably no voltage regulation control for the battery charging. So uh, this battery's not really important to me. It's just for the kids' power wheels. So I'm gonna let her go. See where she ends up. Uh, yeah, we'll keep her rolling. Okay. We're at nine and a half hours. 
there's the fuel gauge. And there's the voltmeter on our battery. Still a little high for my taste, but let's keep it rolling. See you in a few. Okay, well it's 7.43, 11 hours on it. And I think we're getting down to about a quarter tank. So, yeah, one tank of gas gone for 11 hours so far. Let's keep her going. Okay, by the order of uh, the state of Mama, Mama, I was ordered to stop it for uh, the night. Um, it's about a half a tank of fuel, or it says it has a half a tank of fuel, so I think it's about an about eighth. It has 11, 11 half hours on it, so I think right now it's... It's on track to do 15 hours, which is going to be amazing. Uh, but again, I stopped it for the night just for sanity of my wife, our marriage, and the neighbors. So, see you first thing in the morning. Well, good morning, butt pirates. It's 7.50 with uh, 11 hours and 29 minutes on this fuel tank of fuel so far. It's about, it says it's about half, so I think it's about more like quarter to a third, or a quarter to an eighth. Anywho's, it's, uh, let's get this party going. Yeah. Back to you later. Okay, I'm gonna say this is the most boring test I've ever done in a long time. So, fuel needle is fuel sends at a quarter tank, which is getting close. That 13 hours. I'm so rude for it to hit 15. I would like to see it hit 15. Let's see. You'll see the fuel shimmering down there, so. I hope it hits 15. Also, um, I, uh, last night I was reading some of the comments on this thing, uh, or the reviews on this, from those guys, uh, that he got hit by the hurricanes and all the tropical storms. Um, yeah, I mean, I would love to hear you. Like, if you have a story that you didn't post on Harbor Freight for their review uh, about this generator, I'd like to see it down in the comments. Because, uh, yeah, I've seen one of the reviews where a guy ran this thing for, like, like 160-something hours and only stopping in, like, every, like, every so often just to change oil and keep it rolling. So, I think that's pretty amazing. I'm actually starting to get a little faith in this uh, little guy right here. It's actually kind of impressing me now. So uh, hopefully I'll see you in about an hour and a half. All right, so almost 14 hours. Well, did wait, wait, wait. Almost there, almost there. All right, 14 hours. Fuel gauge is not hard over yet. You can see a little bit of, you can see the fuel shimmering in there. Still has got fuel in it. Let's keep it running. Well, I was just walking up to announce it bit past the 15 hour mark and I heard it sputter and it went do 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 do. So 14, <laughs> I, was, I, I call that 15 hours, even money. Um, yeah, that's kind of impressive. And I did the math, it's burning 
one point, uh, or excuse, was it? It's like one and two fifths of a cup an hour. So that's uh. So we're back in the shed from doing the run test. Um, the endurance of uh, minimal load. I think I was it was about two hundred watts if I calculate correctly. Um, on the fluorescent lights are actually under right now that are flickering because my electrical service is going bad and I'm too poor right now or actually don't have enough time right now to dig the the hole for the new pole and you know putting the new service up. Anywho, it's um, so yeah. Here's the oil after the endurance run of 15 hours, which is starting to get nice and clear. It does have a a little bit of a whiff of uh, like there's a little bit of fuel fuel in the oil, so I'm thinking that um, the rings the, uh, the they didn't use the best rings in this, but still. Um, I'm happy with it. Um, I'll be honest with you guys. After this, you know, I was going to test it and, you know, go, all oh, this thing's a pile of shit and, you know, take it back. But it's actually surprised the hell out of me. And I think this might stick around in my shop for a little bit because it's actually uh, very useful. Um, and, uh, or it actually works very well for what it is. And, um, yeah, the only complaint I have about it, the biggest complaint is the freaking plastic bottom. I don't like it because it eliminates you from being able to just throw this in the back of the work truck and, you know, all the banging around like the Hondas do. You're able to do the Hondas. Um, but, yeah, and I think I, said, I think I said this before. The biggest complaint I've heard about this guy was it's either it shit, it's shit out of the box or it runs forever. There's no in between. Um, you look at a lot of the hurricane stories um, on Harbor Freight's uh, website for the reviews, and there's guys that are saying they've had, like I said, had it running for was it 160 hours, over 100 hours. Some even not even talking about changing the oil in it, just throwing oil in it and just running it, which is amazing to me. Um, but. Uh, that's another thing that proved to me that this might be uh, not that bad of a product. Um, but yeah, if it's not critical life support, like, you know, like grandma's freaking uh, uh, um, life, support, life support machine, I'd get this. Um, if it, you're just because of the noise this, this, this puts out, I haven't I always approved the radio noise. But there has been a few complaints. I've saw a few complaints online about radio noise. And um, it's just, you know, that little extra security. Um, and, uh, but, phew. oh, oh, and I forgot. The one other thing I was talking about was down here, or behind this grate. If you take off these six screws, mind you, this is only if you've, uh, um, your uh this is only if your uh warranty is already void on this and you've already gone over you know whatever it is on it is to pull this off and there's a little rubber boot that covers the back end of the uh the alternator and there's a tiny tiny hole in there double the size of that hole to get more airflow going through that alternator because that right there is what makes your electricity and that's the other part of the inverter and that has the good possibility of dying on its own just from the heat and you want to heat is the enemy of that guy but in, in closing yeah I, re I would recommend this or as in harbor freight's little checkbox would you recommend this to a friend yeah i would uh one thing i'd recommend is two things running 1540 oil in it if you're living in a climate like I am where it's never it pretty much never drops below zero. And number two, um as soon as you get home, put oil in it and friggin' put full load underneath it and run a freaking full at least one full tank through it to see how it handles. After that first full tank, drain and fill the oil again with um uh fresh oil. Run it hard again because the thing is is that even though it's 
it says somewhere in the manual about not running it hard until it's broken in. Fuck that. You want to run this thing as hard as you can because the thing is, is that what I think they're trying to do is be sneaky and make it so that it, you can limp it through the um, grace period of the warranty. I say you want to freaking, you want to pull on her hair, get her hot, and find her weaknesses. And um, because would you rather have it find out after in six months that the inverter is bad? Or do you want to find out in a day that the inverter is bad and you have, you're pissed off and you have to drive back to the Harbor Freight to exchange this guy? You know what I mean? Um, so, anyway, I probably, uh, if you have, as you asked me to do any more testing on it and I'll see if I can with my, the abilities I have in the freaking, uh, um, contaminated dirt I have around my property. So, you guys have a great day. The one thing I learned about all this testing is that this guy is gauge sucks. It tells you when you have about a half to a quarter tank, that's when it comes off the full mark and starts sweeping down and empty. So just to keep a heads up so that all this is saying is like, hey, you're getting close to getting empty, so you probably should fill it up again. That's it. So I just did a pre compression check on it, and it's about, what, 145? So... If you want to know some of the uh, kind of interesting about this, <clears throat> in a crazy way it makes sense, is if you look at um, the Honda versus, like the adverb that says Honda versus Predator, the um, thing says that the, how the Honda has a 105cc engine, this only has an 80cc engine. Well, the reason why the Honda has a 105cc is because they run their engines about 80 PSI compression. And the reason why they do that is so for lower the noise coming out of the tailpipe. Because the lower the compression, the less noise you're going to have out of the exhaust, the less of a pop from the air escaping. So that's kind of interesting. So they're combating that by raising the compression up to 150 PSI. Eh, kind of odd. So I figure you like the. Someone out there would like to know that about the compression on this guy. This is after about 20 hours of uh, testing of mixed use of like a tank and a half of heavy load and then freaking a tank of almost no load. So uh, there you be. You guys have a great day.